Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. Today I am reviewing an SPFBO9 finalist. The Fall is All There Is, book one of the Four of Mercies series by C.M. Kaplan. In The Fall is All There Is, we enter a world that has suffered not one but two apocalypses. And one of them being magical and the other being technological. So we have a post-apocalyptic sci fantasy going on here. Oh, a, a difficult one to categorize, frankly. This is one of the things that I actually appreciate about this read is that uh, I was surprised for a lot of the time because I couldn't quite label it. And I kind of liked that, that discomfort. I uh, enjoyed that. Uh, another thing that uh, it reminded me of a little bit, I suppose, was Blade Runner, maybe? I don't know. Uh, it, it was difficult to exactly say, yeah, this is like this or that. So that's, a, I think, a, a, a point in its favor that it is different from most anything else I've read, not only in SPF BO9, but uh, in general. So just to give you a little bit of a taste of this world, you have things like cyborg horses made of guts and gears. You have Gaunts, which are essentially uh, people taken over by malicious, angry spirits that permeate the, the world in a kind of noxious fog, forcing the inhabitants to wear a mask all the time when they are outdoors, lest they become possessed. So you have in this book a lot of pain, frankly. There's a lot of pain, both physical and mental, I would say. But there's also a, a wonderful sense of humor that comes through even or perhaps even especially during the bleakest and most violent moments in the story. I think one's enjoyment of the fall is all there is, is probably going to hinge on the protagonist, the first person narrator, Peter Mercy. His voice is just all over this story. He is at the heart of it. He is the focus of the story in so many ways. And just to give you a brief idea of, of what kind of uh, protagonist we have here, uh, he is autistic. He suffers from extreme anxiety at times. And he shares pretty much every thought that he has in his head without any filter whatsoever, including his pretty vigorous sexual appetite. Uh, and that uh, it even happens sometimes that he'll break the fourth wall and he forms a kind of connection with the reader that way. I thought that was a pretty clever thing on the part of C.M. Kaplan uh, to have Peter directly address us sometimes. Uh, I actually liked that. It worked for me. Uh, Peter's company was painful uh, uh, and it was difficult and uncomfortable at times, I found. But I actually ended up liking him, and I'm very intrigued by that. Uh, I, I felt, uh, certainly by the middle of the story, a real sense of connection, and I found myself rooting for Peter uh, the entire time. So well done on that score, I would say. Much of the plot, which is honestly fairly thin, because this is a story that really focuses on that central character. Uh, but So the plot is... Uh, mostly Peter encountering his highly dysfunctional family, uh, kind of one member at a time. We're introduced to his siblings. He is a quadruplet, so we meet his uh, siblings and his mother, and these are varying degrees of uh, discomfort and antagonism, but also, in the midst of all that, genuine affection. So there is a real familial connection as well. These people know each other intimately. And they, uh, <laughs> they play off, it's, it's, as I said, a highly dysfunctional, maybe that the word doesn't even begin to capture uh, the dynamic going on. Uh, but there's a, also a codependency, you could say, happening at the same time. So you really, I think a, uh, a uh, psychoanalyst would have a field day with this family, probably. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're, they're still in the midst of all that is genuine affection. And I found that actually kind of endearing. Um, so... But yeah, Peter, just he just wants to stay out of the way. He, he is the black sheep of the family. He just wants to stay out of the way, especially when the political machinations start, uh, which was spurred by the death of uh, Peter's father, the king, and his uh, siblings are vying for power. Uh, he just wants to be away from all of that manipulation and all the uh, potential violence. Um, but of course, 
he gets sucked into it. Uh, so yeah, that, that is but the, the basic uh, premise of the plot. Overall, I really did enjoy, I guess enjoy, enjoy maybe isn't quite the right word, but I, I was impressed by much of the writing here. Uh, I think that C.M. Kaplan has done something very imaginative, very original in this story. And I have to take my hat off to him for that. Uh, I think that uh, this is a standout in many ways. Uh, there is some really beautiful writing at times, uh, but I will say that I, I wish it had been a little more edited. I did find a fair number, and this is me, I'm, I'm just kind of this way, uh, being an English professor does this to you, I guess, but I tend to notice when there's a typo or that sort of thing, or things that probably 99% of people don't care about, like the difference between the verbs lie and lay. Uh, these things I notice, um, and, but also just that there were, uh, even though the book has clearly been edited uh, in the acknowledgements, uh, there's some really cool people who have helped to edit this book, um, but uh, I did notice a fair number of typos and that kind of thing, and that does, just for a moment, you know, boot me out of the story. Um, I also feel like if you're looking for a really well-developed plot, you're just not going to find this. Now, that may be because this is book one of a series, and there's obviously in any book one going to be a lot of setup. Um, so I think that is an important uh, fact to mention when assessing this plot. Um, but I did enjoy myself. I am very glad that I read The Fall is All There Is. Uh, I think that it's uh, highly original and uh, a bit of a standout for all that. Now, my ratings, if you haven't heard before, are one to two is a, a book that I think is so highly flawed uh, that it just really ought to be uh, probably not even published. <laughs> and uh, three to four is a book that is also flawed, uh, but has some real virtues to it. It's something I feel could be worked up into a really good read. Uh, five to six is a, a book that I, I think is, uh, I've gotten a, a lot of enjoyment out of it. I think is good. I think there's a lot going for it. Uh, a seven to eight is a book that really highly impressed me. And a nine to 10 is a book that is going to be among my very favorites of all time. So I'm being pretty picky here with my ratings, I'm being kind of stingy. But the important thing is that I'm being consistently stingy. Uh, so the fall is all there is for me is a seven out of 10, uh, which is to say it is a book that I really did enjoy and it, and it impressed me quite a lot. Uh, so very glad I read this. I can recommend it for people who, who think they might vibe with the, the sort of book that I just described uh, for sure. That is it for me for now. Until next time.